morning, everybody. Dear really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Hakuoki Kyoto Wins. Today, we are beginning on Chikage Kazuma's route. Hooray! We're done with all of the brand new guys, and Chikage Kazuma has a longer route in this game. Well, between this game and Edo Blossoms. So I think he should have a fair number of extra new scenes in uh, the first game here, since he didn't really have many scenes in the first half of the game in the original, I don't believe. So I guess we'll see. Again, as usual, we're going to be skipping everything previously read, so fair warning, please watch the entire playlist in order so you don't miss any common route scenes. Alright, so for our first choice, we have to find a way to escape. And this time, we have to run for it. For the first time. I had no choice but to run. If I was going to die anyway, then I had nothing to lose by trying to escape. Slipping around a stunned Kondo, I took off down the hallway. And he didn't try to stop me at all. Did you really think you could escape? Can't blame a girl for trying. Ah! Uh, he snatched me from the floor in one smooth motion with cat-like grace. L let me go! You think I'm stupid? You'll just try to run. No. But I don't want to die! And I... I... There's something I have to do! Huh. <laughs> and what's that, huh? What compels a girl to run around Kyoto, pretending she's a boy? Huh? Did he just say... a girl? When I stopped flapping my feet and arms, Hijikata put me back down on the floor. Um... sir? I looked up at Hijikata, and he didn't seem happy at all. Did... did you just say girl? I was scared. There was no denying it. Sanan looked at us and nodded. I see. Then you really were a girl. Come on, you thought putting on a pair of pants was going to fool us. Even an idiot could tell. Wait, so all of you knew from the start? Not all of them. Was my disguise that unnatural? I wasn't quite sure what to think. Oh, Isami Kondo, you fool. This is the shame of a lifetime. How could I not have realized? I don't know. Uh, well, perhaps they hadn't all known. I confess his reaction put me more at ease. A little more confident in my disguise. You almost got killed for it, whatever it is. Maybe it's time you spilled your guts, kid. Hopefully not in the literal sense. <laughs> he doesn't look happy, but we still raised his affection. I looked back at him and nodded. And skipped. And here we search the compound. No, I can't. I can't dress like a girl, ever. Quietly return to my room, in shame. Accompany Hijikata as his page. And explain the situation here. Leave and search for my father. And once again, scoop things out. This time we're going upstairs, we got something new to do. Nagakura's encouragement allowed me to push forward up the stairs. I made it to the second floor, weary in the moment. The musty scent of blood filled my nostrils, like a metallic tang bitterly stinging my face as the screams of men echoed around me. Without a second thought, I opened the nearest sliding doors and ran into the room. <sighs> was this what battle was like? The grim reality sunk into me, and I shivered at the thought. The adrenaline from earlier was slowing. I was alone and very much afraid for my life. This room, too, seemed to be the only untouched reprieve from the stench of fresh blood. I calmed my ragged breath, and I took a keen look at my surroundings. Really? Nobody else is here but Kazuma? That gorgeous blonde demon. Pray tell what brings you to me. A figure sat on the windowsill, staring out calmly at the night sky as he talked plainly to me. He wore no uniform, and bore no familiarity to me. Was he one of the ronin staying at the Ikeda Inn? And what was he doing up here? This man appeared to have taken no part in the battle, basking in the bright moonlight as if he were above the fighting. I couldn't peel my eyes away from him. Neither can I. His aura was peculiar, but I was soothed by the coolness and solemnity of his demeanor. Um, who are you? So... You are the question master now, huh? Huh. <laughs> Very interesting. Turn the mirror on yourself, 
worry about where you are more than you're worried about me. His words snapped me back into place. That's right. This person is an enemy. I reached for my Kodachi instinctively. Oh, now that is a pretty little blade. You bought a Kodachi to a sword fight, huh? <laughs> Sorry, my Schwartz is not as big as yours. Wait a minute, is that... He recognizes it. His eyes darted to my Kodachi, standing slowly while keeping his gaze fixed on my weapon. Just then, the sliding door behind me flew open, and a bloodied ronin walked in. Hey, the shit's a Gumi raided! He saw me and stopped his report. Who the hell are you? Are you an enemy? You must be. Then you better die. He screamed and he swung his sword toward me. Before his katana could reach my head, a great roar came from the mysterious figure. Silence. Don't talk to his girl like that. The mysterious figure charged the ronin with one strike. Didn't I tell you? You should be more concerned about yourself. But why when you're here to protect me? He was ruthless toward the ronin. My voice quivered in fear as the air in the room grew still. Why? Isn't this ronin your ally? Well, he's not an ally. That's why I cut him loose. He sheathed his sword gracefully, and I became amazed by a sense of self-possession. I attempted to... Thank him. Capture him. Yeah, I can see how well that would go trying to capture Kazuma. My god, I couldn't even capture Heisuke if I wanted to. This man is no Shinsengumi warrior. His purpose here was unknown to me. His eyes captivated all of my senses. Staring into them drew me into a lucid hypnosis, filling me with doubt about if he was my enemy. He picked up on this, smirking discreetly. Um, thank you. Hmm. Looks like you have some manners despite being the Shinsugumi's bitch. Hey! That's no way to endear yourself to me. He was mocking the Shinsengumi and me, but still, I couldn't bring myself to argue against what he was saying. Ah, uh, you could argue against the bitch part at least. So, why did you save me? He ignored me, glancing instead to my Kodachi. The Kodachi, does it belong to you? Well, yes? His red eyes twinkled brightly against the soft moonlight, refracting into the dimly lit room. Ah yes, this pleases him. Huh. Then you can thank your Kodachi. Huh? My business here is done. You do whatever you want. Translation, he'll deal with me later. He winked slyly and took his time walking toward the window, jumping through without any hesitation or final words. What? I ran over to the window, but there was no sign of his landing nor footprints. No way. Where did he go? Who was that? He made it clear that he was not aligned with the Choshu Ronin, but why was he here? I stood there dumbfounded, and I sensed a presence stepping behind me very quietly. I inched my hand carefully toward my Kodachi to avoid any sudden movements from them. Yukimura, are you alright? Saito! It turned out to be Saito standing in front of me. I'm surprised I even sensed his presence then. I thought he was at the Shikoku Inn with Hijikata. Thank goodness, reinforcements had arrived. And here we ask Iba if he was a patient. I want to come. Choose to go to Mount Tenno. And we're here at this encounter on our way to Mount Tenno, where we meet Kazuma. Apparently this is going to be a little different this time. Hijikata! As I spoke, I pointed to the man in front of us. He was at the Ikeda Inn! Hijikata's eyes narrowed, and I saw his lips pull back from his teeth just slightly. Well, that's all we get just because we had to acknowledge that we had met him before. And this time we had to stop Nagakura, because we are not on his route. No, Nagakura, you can't! This fight wasn't why the Shinsengumi came here. Hijikata's troops' mission was to follow the Choshu rebels to Mount Tenno. There could be no doubt that the strange swordsman was an enemy, and a dangerous one. We might have needed our whole force to defeat him. Hijikata, however, would never let us abandon our mission out of fear of losing, especially after his speech. Nagakura could see this mysterious man was quite powerful, 
and after a few moments spent grinding his teeth, he took his hand off his sword. Hey, Hijikata, I'm going to take your guys for a bit if that's all right with you. Huh, <laughs> big mouth over here. They're yours, Shimpachi. The commander's eyes followed the swordsman, and his mouth curled into a predatory grin. Listen up, guys. We're going to run straight for Mount Tenno. No stopping. The soldiers roared their assent. Damn you. Pay attention. I'll put a sword through your back as easily as your front. Hijikata was in a fighting stance and put himself between the troops and the man to avoid escape. Don't get in my way. He swung his sword and Hijikata received it and was thrown back. Damn, that was an intense swing. So am I staying behind here with Hijikata to witness this fight? Since there was a distance between Hijikata and himself, the man turned toward Nagakura. I... Hold my place. I want to witness this battle. My knees locked up, so I drew my Kodachi out of defense. My swordsmanship won't be useful in the battle, but I may be able to buy everyone time. I laid my hand on the handle of my sword. And then he laughed. Next thing I knew, a high-pitched clang of metal clashed resoundingly, and I was on the floor. I was blindsided by the hit, and when my eyes were back in focus, I saw his blade pointed down toward me, and blood trickled down my face. Did he slash my cheeks? Again, not endearing yourself. That Kodachi. Huh. A familiar sight indeed. Ah, oh, once again beautiful with that sun shining behind him. Hey, do you realize what is happening? The wound on your face is already starting to heal. Yeah, even if you knew that was going to happen, it was still rude. <gasps> huh? This is... I slapped my cheek with my hand, but the cut had sealed. The pain ceased, but the blood stopped flowing. His crimson eyes widened. Who would have thought I'd meet another one of us here? And a female demon, no less. Tell me, girl, what is your name? And how did you come across this Kodachi? Before I could answer, a dull clang of metal rang above us as Hijikata swung his sword from behind while the man parried it in front of me. Get away from the kid. You bastard, stay out of my way. I'm the one you're fighting. Or are you telling me you only use your sword on kids? Didn't take you for a bully. How dare you, you shogun a bitch. Yukimura, go on ahead. Uh, okay. Suddenly I was jolted with urgency and I started to dash away. Hijikata was right behind me, but I don't think he saw the cut on my face. It'll be alright. I'm sure of it. Demon, one of us. Everything he said rattled inside my head, but all I could do was run straight for Mount Tenno and never look back. And skipping. So I get to keep my secret a little bit longer since Hijikata didn't actually see it, I don't think. Honorable suicide, eh? Good for them. As he spoke, he flashed half a smile at Nagakura. But why? Only a few hours before, he'd said they were criminals and only deserved to be beheaded, but now he applauded them for taking their own lives? My question came out instinctively, as if my heart spoke for me rather than my head. He shrugged. Seems like you don't get it. As Shinsengumi, this doesn't look good on us. They succeeded in their mission, which means we failed. They're dead. What good would it do me to ignore what they did? Friend or enemy, a man who dies with honor, deserves at least some respect. Oh, I suppose that makes some sense. It was obvious I didn't quite understand what he was trying to say. His expression softened a little. If you stay with us a little longer, you may eventually get it. Together once again, we returned to the Imperial Estate to meet up with the rest of the Shinsengumi. On the way back, Hijikata and the men began to discuss their next move. It looked like there was still plenty for the Shinsengumi to do in Kyoto. And we gotta skip some. And here we tell Kondo that we want him to train us because we want to watch over everyone while he's gone. Where we go to investigate. Once again, the Yagi house. 
And this time we try to persuade him on our own. And here our scene is going to be a little bit different since we've had some interactions already with the guys. Do your injuries heal quickly? Too quickly, perhaps? W well, I... I gulped. You are not getting it through your head. The scar on your cheek is already starting to heal. Kazuma then directed his gaze toward the Kodachi on my hip. And skipping a little. This time we choose to stay. Because I want to be with these guys. One in particular. This time I reach for my sword. I'm going to be bold. <laughs> I wrapped my fingers around the hilt of my Kodachi and looked at Kazuma. Both Shirano and Amagiri displayed superhuman levels of skill. Something that all struck me. I didn't think my swordsmanship could be of any help to anyone. But to distract them even for a fraction of a second, I had to take my chance. And to do that, I will draw my sword. Apparently, that will impress him. Get out of here, you idiot. He'll tear you apart. Nah, he wants to use me for something else. Hijikata screamed at me, making me second-guess myself, and I sheathed my sword. Yamazaki, keep her out of this. Don't let her get any closer. You mistake me for a weak crap like you. I give you the honor of fighting me, and you chatter. Very well, then. I'll show you who is truly in control. Say you can shut your mouth for good. Heh, <laughs> keep telling yourself that. I still owe you one for taking out my men during the Hamagoto Rebellion. Their rivalry was intense. One could nearly see the sparks in their glares. A bloodlust whose tension made it nearly impossible to breathe. Huh. <laughs> I don't keep track of each and every insect I squash. That's so. I'll be sure to refresh your memory. I'll send you to hell so you can apologize to them in person. One more step. They moved so quickly that in the blink of an eye, I missed Hijikata furiously clash with Kazuma's blade. Ah! Oh, I get another awesome picture. The two swords ground against one another, screaming in protest. <sighs> Hijikata swung with the fullness of his strength, but Kazuma merely parried it with an unfazed expression. The force of the blade's meeting sent a small breeze that swayed his bangs. You're not a human, are you? Just what the hell are you? Haven't I made it clear that I'm of a demon clan? Not only am I, or we, but so is she. Jeez, that it was too much for you. We've come to take her off your hands. I'm too much woman for him. The hell you say? Their blade shuddered too quickly for my eyes to follow. All I could catch was the flicker of the moonlight on them, sparks flashing as they met. They left at each other and met for a moment. The two men circled, then leapt forward again. Jeez! The clipped strands of Kazuma's hair drifted away on a cool evening breeze. I'm surprised he isn't really pissed off about that. I see. There were no signs of fear on his face. Instead, I saw what I thought was perhaps the tiniest flicker of respect. He lowered his sword. What the hell is this? And skipping. For this choice? Yes, please. And we're back to poor Okita not being our business. At this point, finally, the demons will be our biggest worry. Who are these men who call themselves demons? What are these demons? After fighting them, I could say they sure as hell aren't human, not by a long shot. I've fought against many different kinds of warriors, but I've never met anyone as powerful as them. Yeah, I'd say demon is a pretty good way to describe them. Kazuma and his companions clearly had strength and skill far beyond that of most men. I could even say that if they were to go against a wild bear or wolf, they'd still defeat them. Well, hell, if Hijikata thinks they're demons, then they gotta be demons. What, takes one to know one? Yep, he's the Shinsengumi's demon after all. Shut it, you two. This is serious. Their playful argument was familiar ground, but it was a small beacon against the darkness. I felt myself relax, and a sigh of relief found its way through me. April 1866 
Almost a year had passed since the Shinsengumi moved to the Nishihongwonji Temple. At first, the new compound seemed so big, and it was hectic getting everyone to adjust, but now I feel like it's become a place we can call home. As long as it was within the Nishihongwaji Temple, I was allowed to move as I pleased around the compounds. Maybe that was why... I kept my guard down. Ah. And is Kazuma gonna come along while my guard is down? Phew! That day, as I was cleaning the compounds, I was so carried away with my duties that I noticed I had made it to the center of the temple. I stopped, pausing to look at my surroundings, and I noticed the fresh new buds dotting the trees planted around the compounds. I realized then that it was spring. It made me stop to count how many springs I'd welcomed during my time in Kyoto. It meant, though, that the weather was going to turn warm soon, which only increased my joy. As such thoughts crossed my mind, I saw a man standing at the corner of my eye. When did he get so close? I couldn't recognize him as a member of the temple staff. As I squinted my eyes to make out his features, I looked toward his face and my eyes grew wide. You should have recognized his outfits the same thing he always wears. There, it's the Jikage Kazuma. The man who allegedly affiliated with the Satsuma, a man who outed himself as a Shinsengumi enemy. And the man who tried to abduct me. Instantly, I felt nervous and froze. What should I do? What can I do? It felt like he could sense my nervousness, and he looked at me and spoke with a warm tone. Don't fret. I'm not here today to abduct you. It's been a while since I last stepped foot in Kyoto, and I just happened to visit the Nishihonwanji Temple. Just happened to, huh? Do you think I'd believe that? Well, if I'm being honest... I've come to check up on you, but my moods can be fickle, so I've decided to admire this temple instead. How can I take anything he says as truth? My natural reaction would have been to turn and run and alert everyone that he's here, but I doubted that he'd let me run away. Maybe I should scream for help. Just to let you know, if I was coming here to abduct you, then I would have done so already. Yeah, I don't think you would have let me see him coming. <laughs> he has a point. I'm sure if he wanted to abduct me, I wouldn't be able to fight him off. Then, why is he here? To admire the temple, he said. This place is filled with people ready to fight him, and it's swarming with Shinsengumi men. Was it possible that he really came here alone just to visit the temple? Shrines, temples, statues, the city. If humans can do one thing right, it's building beautiful cultural monuments. Oh, he actually respects art. Huh? I did not expect Kazuma to say anything kind, let alone complimentary to humans. I was so dumbfounded by his demeanor that I had no idea what to do next. If you think these courtyards and buildings are as gorgeous as I think they are, look up. I didn't sense any animosity in his words. Maybe that was why... In this moment, I felt drawn to him and I stood next to him to glance above us. Normally, I'm so occupied with helping out around the compounds that I never take the time to sit and marvel at the scenery. But when I looked, I could sense life teeming from the trees surrounding every corner of the compounds. The soft sunlight of spring accented the features of the temple. It was so refreshing watching the bountiful spring around me, as if I was seeing it for the first time. Before I knew it, I had opened my mouth. Wow, it's... beautiful. Don't you find it strange? Humans are capable of producing such beautiful things. Yet, they think nothing of it when their wars reduce such beauty into ashes and dust and fire. They're such fools. And despite being of the same species, clan, or family, they'll find any reason to kill one another. They don't even blink when it comes to deceiving their fellow man, lying their way to the top, and if they want something, they'll steal it. What do you say, when you say humans are foolish? There may be some people like that, but that doesn't apply to everyone. Are you talking about those bastards? Yes, even though the Shinsengumi pride themselves on being warriors, they do it to protect the people of Kyoto and the Shogunate. It's never for their personal gain. What Kasuma described was true, that there are many people in the world capable of evil. However, the Shinsengumi men are different. I know because I spend every day with them. Then, 
Let me tell you a story. Not too far from the Nishi Hongwanji Temple is the Hagashi Hongwanji Temple. A temple beside a temple. Have you ever thought about how odd that is? Oh, yes. Hmm. Why is that? Long ago, before there was an Edo Shogunate, these two temples were a part of a much larger, more powerful temple named the Hongwanji. During the period of war, the Hongwanji forces were successful in holding the castle for ten years against Nobunaga Oda. Do you think the Tokugawa, who founded the Edo Shogunate, allowed an immense political power such as the Hongwanji to be left as they were? Well, I suppose not. Kazuma seemed satisfied with my response, and he nodded and continued on. So, the Shogunate operated behind the scenes, establishing the Higashi Hongwanji and isolating the original Hongwanji Temple. They manipulated the two entities, fanning the embers of conflict until the two sides eventually broke out into battle. They essentially split the Hongwanji forces and funding in half, which exhausted all of their men and made long-term war unfeasible. The separated Nishi Hongwanji and Higashi Hongwanji are the result of this conflict. Neither side knew they were being manipulated, battling their former friends, allies, and comrades for hundreds of years. So, you don't think this sounds familiar? Are... are you talking about the Shinsugumi men? Kazuma didn't answer me. These men in whom you foolishly placed your faith are only pawns of the Shogunate. They won't realize they're pawns until it's too late, and they will forever be the Shogunate's bitches, swinging their swords to put food on the table. They have no sense of the bigger picture, nor do they show any regard for others. All they care about is advancing their self-interests. So you're telling me that your faith in humans is because of men like them. I still have faith in them. Just one little story isn't going to sway me. Even then, I'd have faith in them. I've lived with them for the past few years, and I've seen them closely, I know. Everyone struggles, and they put forth so much effort to achieve what they believe is right. So, I don't think they are like the people you think they are. I think there's something more. So, you think the Shinsengumi are just, and you don't care if they kill one another or participate in their needless wars? Well, I guess it wouldn't be alright. I think he just likes me to argue with him. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't you a selfish one? But I do commend your desire to keep loyalty for those you have faith in, even if it's futile. Ah, he likes my sense of loyalty. Huh? What? Well, it seems like I've overstayed my welcome. Oh, we have company? He stood up nonchalantly and brushed his shoulder. I guess he really wasn't planning to do anything. Will he really just up and leave like that? What? You want me to abduct you or something? Well, kinda, yeah, I am on your route. Uh, of course not! I'll tell you one thing. The Shinsengumi are so fond of, they're just a bunch of dumb hicks who convince themselves that they're warriors just because they own a sword. They draw their swords when they're told, and they kill their own men without batting an eyelash. I wouldn't trust such people. But everyone is... When the time comes, I will come for you. Think hard on it until then. Come for me, but I won't... I threw my arm out to reach for him, but a gust of wind blew between my fingertips and him. I covered my face to block the wind, and as I looked up, Kazuma was already gone. I was left alone, reflecting on Kazuma's words. He has a point. Humans fight so needlessly. But still, I... I wanted to believe somewhere in my heart that the Shinsengumi are something more than that. And now we're skipping, and uh, that's going to be the ending of this video. No time for more at the moment. So we'll pick up with more of Chikage Kazuma in the next episode. So glad to be on this rail, and I really hope we do have a good amount in this. I really think we should. But I've been hurt before. So, <laughs> yeah, as I always say, we'll see as time goes on. So I hope to see you in the next video or in some of my other ones. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.